Alright guys, this time we'll be talking about uh, software defined networks and uh, this is a relatively new concept uh, emerging from the traditional networking uh, perspective. Okay, so currently we'll try to use SLOW as a representative uh, protocol of those networks for collecting uh, data flows uh, to detect a network flood. Um, I recommend uh, blog sflow.com as a good resource of tutorials and uh, information about uh, how to use uh, in practice sflow and in particular sflow-rt. sflow-rt allows us uh, to be able to inspect and monitor uh, different uh, flows, uh, set thresholds on those flows when they are uh, reached. We also have an uh, option on how to handle events with those uh, thresholds when they are reached. We will also use a Mininet, and Mininet is um, an instant uh, virtual network and it supports virtual controllers, switches and hosts. Uh, so basically we'll be connecting uh, as flow uh, with Mininet and then we'll be trying to flood our network and to detect this flood. Okay, so first uh, I advise you to uh, download with wget and uh, unpack this uh, latest uh, as flow RT. The next thing uh, you would like to do is to install Java. So Java can be installed by uh, sudo apt install default uh, Java runtime environment. I have it here installed already. And then uh, what we'll do is uh, to go to the slowrt directory. And here we see a directory called uh, extras. Basically we'll have one uh, script, uh, which is called uh, mark.js. If we open this uh, script in Visual Studio Code, we see what it consists of. It's written in uh, JavaScript. So first we are defining uh, certain flow keys and metrics and uh, of course threshold value. Um, so this is uh, defined in order for our um, interpreter of traffic or analyzer as uh, low R3 to be able to know what to follow up. And the uh, router, we are installed in our uh, local host. So uh, this is the address for the router. And uh, we are uh, setting uh, with those metrics a uh, flow to be followed. And then when uh, we have the flow, we're setting a threshold when this flow is reached. And uh, basically um, the whole handling function is uh, inside of a set event handler. And basically we're logging that the float is uh, detected. And afterwards uh, we are grabbing the input port of the uh, router and, um, and just uh, logging it on the screen. So this event handler or this function will run uh, for the ICMP flood uh, metric we defined inside of SFlow RT to be follow up. Uh, so, okay, this is mark.js, our script. And now in the terminal, we need to uh, start the SFlow uh, saying that uh, uh, it will load up uh, this uh, script. Um, so we will use the following command. All right, so basically we are uh, saying that uh, we would like uh, in an environment variable to use uh, from the directory extras mark.js or our file and to run the slow. Uh, so we run the command and we see that uh, uh, we are uh, starting listening for slow on uh, this port and then uh, actually we're starting uh, the analytical dashboard of slow RT on uh, another port and uh, we are interpreting the mark.js uh, script. Uh, we have a little error in the script so we'll stop and see um, what's the error. All right, this was just uncommented uh, string. So again, we'll run the script and we see that uh, mark.js is started. Okay, the next step is to run a uh, mininet. I recommend installing uh, mininet directly by using sudo apt install uh, mininet. And uh, then you can install also open v switch. Open v switch switch. Um, this is because mininet uh, uh, is, is using OpenV switch as a default uh, switching provider and it will complain uh, that we will not start without it. All right, now let's start Mininet. So this is the following uh, string we are running in order to start uh, Mininet. As we can see, uh, we are using some extras from SFlow in a way to be able to connect uh, Mininet with SFlow. Uh, in detail, this means that we would like to export the topology of uh, Mininet to be able to be uh, detected by SFlow RT. Okay, let's start uh, and the Mininet uh, emulator right now. And we here we see that we need to um, restart Mininet. So we'll type sudo mn-c. 
Okay, the next thing is to control the path. So from here directly we'll start. When using those commands, I advise you to look carefully where your uh, start scripts are residing and which directory you are inside. Uh, so that was the problem. You have to correct the directory here. So we see that uh, Minnet has created the network, added controller and four hosts, and three switches with direct linking between them. They're configured and uh, we see here sending the topology. This means that uh, slow RT should be able to receive the topology from uh, Mininet. Okay, once uh, this is set up, we can go to our browser and uh, see a visualization of the uh, network. Okay, so we'll browse the following address, localhost at port 8008. And uh, we see that uh, we have detected one SVO agent. And uh, so far, things look uh, all right. And here uh, in apps, uh, we see I've installed uh, two apps, Browse Metrics and Mininet uh, Dashboard. In order to have those, because they don't have uh, pre-installed, I advise you from the terminal to go to the slow uh, directory and here I run the following command. One is to install a Browse Metrics plugin and the other is to be uh, the Mininet Dashboard. Here they both exist. Uh, so afterwards you need to restart the slow RT interpreter and then again uh, to run uh, the browser on this port and you have uh, both of the applications uh, browse metrics we can see for example the utilization of the uh, incoming interface and also a lot of other uh, statistics based on, on those uh, parameters defined here and we can try also the Minunet uh, dashboard uh, we see here the topology of our network uh, we see our three switches uh, and uh, the connections between them and on the charts we can see uh, our traffic so let's try now to uh, create traffic and uh, visualize it here on those charts we'll go to mininet iperf to measure the performance between the two hosts and we see that we are testing the TCP bandwidth between them and uh, immediately we see here a graphic because everything is uh, in real time. If we go to slow, we see that uh, immediately our script has detected a flood. This is the incoming uh, interface port and the uh, source IP address. In this way, we're using its uh, real time uh, capabilities. And the next example we'll do is to connect uh, another controller which will be able, to, whenever it detects flood, to install new flows which will block this flood. So for this, we'll go back to the terminal and we'll stop uh, both as flow and we'll exit from a mini net. This time we'll be uh, dealing with another script and this script is provided, uh, as I said, from the uh, block of uh, slow.com and it works correctly. In this script, we have uh, one controller which will listen on a certain address. Again, we are setting our uh, flow and threshold, which has to be monitored on the set event handler function we would like to get uh, from where the incoming traffic is coming from uh, which interface port then basically we are forming one rule and uh, we are connecting to our RUI controller and with a post request we are sending as a json this rule um, also in this script we have an object of uh, controls where we are storing uh, previous attempts um, of floods so in case of uh, a flood detected, we are checking whether we already have installed a flow uh, blocking uh, this flood. That's why we are having this array here. From the flow key of the event happening, we are extracting the IP destination and UDP source port as an information. And uh, we are then constructing our flow. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, protocol to match? Uh, is it an Ethernet connection? And then we are blocking uh, the whole subnet uh, of the uh, attack and uh, after we have this message we are connecting to the RUI controller adding this uh, message as a flow entry and of course afterwards we are adding the flow into our array in order to track it and this uh, function runs every uh, 10 seconds uh, to check whether uh, the flow is still blocked which means that uh, we have to wait uh, 10 seconds before releasing the flow and that's uh, what we're doing here 
So we are sending another uh, request uh, uh, to the Rui controller and we are deleting the blocking flow. And that's how the script works. Let's see uh, this now in practice. We'll go to the terminal. In another terminal, uh, in order uh, to use our new controller, we'll have to install Ryu. And Ryu is uh, free uh, for usage. And I recommend you to install Ryu uh, using uh, first uh, git clone to grab the source and then uh, to uh, install it uh, with a Python uh, installer. Okay, once you are ready, you should export your path uh, because uh, Ryu will be installed uh, in a different directory. So use uh, export path to add this directory to your current path. And um, you should be able to run Ryu Manager. So this is the test that uh, um, your path is correct and uh, Ryu is installed. Right, uh, so we'll stop uh, for now. One more thing is to be able to install hping because uh, we'll be attacking the host uh, via this command. So use uh, sudo apt install hping3. Uh, and uh, here I have it installed. So now it's uh, time uh, to uh, run the components one by one. Okay, so we'll go to Rio, Rio. Then we'll go to app. And here we have different configurations of different switches. And we'll start one of them. So we'll start Swimpon switch and OF control arrest API with the Rio manager. We see that uh, it is working. They're loaded up and we can use our, our switch. We'll go to SORT. Here we'll run the following command. We'll go to extras and we'll run the Rio script. Um, as you remember uh, here, the following script we just uh, discussed. At the same time, we will start as for RT. Okay, we see that uh, everything works correctly and our script is uh, started. Also, the connection to Mininet is uh, started. And now it's time for the Mininet. Okay, here we'll use another um, command. Actually, we'll be using custom configuration uh, to be able to uh, connect uh, Mininet with SVOL, so to be linked. Afterwards, uh, for the controller, we will not use the default OpenV switch uh, controller, but we will use uh, a remote controller with this uh, localhost IP address. And the next are options uh, for the topology we would like to create. So we run uh, Mininet. Uh, it looks uh, fine. Now we can uh, go uh, to monitor the process directly in our browser with via S4RT. Okay, we see the topology, we see the charts. Now we can run high performance, the first performance between H1 and H2. And we see that this uh, is detected uh, here in our graph. And inside of SORT, we don't have any uh, kind of uh, attack detected. And now let's try the UDP reflection attack. From host one, we'll run HPINK3 via the UDP protocol uh, towards uh, host H3. All right, let's see uh, what is in our browser. If we see that uh, we have connection between the uh, switches and uh, here we see a traffic also appearing and now I will stop the attack. And we see that zero packets have been received and 100% of the packets uh, are being lost no matter that we have over 700,000 packets. Uh, we saw also that uh, the traffic towards the destination address has been blocked and then unblocked after the timeout. Um, it's interesting to interpret a little bit of the graphic split by uh, different switches. The sending switch is uh, generating the traffic, but the receiving switch, as you can see, it's almost was not hit by the attack. And this is the beauty of this uh, blocking script because it allows us uh, to have a normal traffic while someone is uh, trying to flood our network. We saw the power of uh, SLOW RT of uh, detecting uh, flows, attacks, and uh, then using external SDN controller in order to uh, circumvent uh, certain attacks. All right, guys, that was uh, for this tutorial. If you have enjoyed the information, you can subscribe to the channel.